I feel like a child who's been given a second helping of pudding today because I have not one but two legends of the South African arts world with me on the couch today. Firstly, it's a warm welcome back to poet, writer and storyteller Sindiwe Magona. Uh, her latest release is called Theatre Road and it's the biography of our second guest, actress and musician Tembi Mchali Jones. And I know some of you are going to feel the urge to call her Toko after years of watching her on Scoot is <laughs> Nice. I don't think she'll mind if you do. Uh, if you do want to call in and say hello or uh, send a message, Please do use the voice notes uh, at your disposal. Welcome to both of you. It's wonderful to have you today. Thank you. Thank you for you. having us. Sandiwe, uh, I mean, we've chatted before about uh, your, your previous books, but th this partnership uh, really intrigues me because this is a story that starts, I know, when you gave Tembi one of your books, I think more than 30 years ago. Um, and she then developed that into a, a one-woman play, Mother to Mother, mm -hmm. uh, which really played a huge role in cementing her fame as an actress. Did you ever imagine back then that one day you'd be working working together like this, that you'd be writing her story? You know, it's the, it's a strange thing, but it's a kind of a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, because the friendship just keeps on growing and amazing me, amazing mm. me. I know it's taken you nearly a decade to get this book to print. Is that just because you are both so good at what you do that you're always in demand and always traveling and always busy? That's her I've fault. That's her <laughs> fault. <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> hi, 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 people. Hi. <laughs> well, I've been uh, working and traveling a lot. Mm. Uh, we started in 2011. <laughs> oh, don't say. <laughs> in 2011. And we were very enthusiastic when we started. And mm. then I, I started getting jobs and uh, traveling. And, and then Cindy will call me and say, hey, I'm waiting. <laughs> and I'll say, OK, I'll write like a page and, and send it to you. I said, no, not a page, pages. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but and and then we you know we sort of like revisited it you know now and then now and then until uh, last year last year yeah was it last late year? last year. late <laughs> last year when I said to Cindy oh my God I'm turning seventy next year and Cindy said this is the time to that's finish the, the deadline. book that's yeah. it that's it no excuses and by then I'm uh, you know I'm working in Durban and and uh, fully booked every day because I'm doing a, a daily show and yeah but you know I had sleepless nights. But you did it. Yes, I, yes. I mean, reading I it, I, 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 reading it, I, I saw what the problem was because you just kept on creating another chapter. Um, <laughs> every time you did something else extraordinary and interesting. And um, I mean, I felt for you, Cindy, as the it's author. It's been that kind of life. Yeah. I felt for myself. <laughs> yeah, but it's a life of a 70-year-old a uh, uh, woman, you know, I've, I've had a very long life and very interesting life. Now that you have, and there's so much of it crammed between these uh, these covers, we can't cover it all. But I do want to, to pick up with the show that really was a game changer for your career, Tembi, with Epitombi. Yes. Uh, you were originally hired as an understudy for, yes. for the role of Mama Tembu. It was literally the lead actress getting sick and having a day off that gave you a big break, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, she happened to be sick on the day when the producers were coming to watch the the run through for the show and and then the director said okay you know fill in and I did and I did my best and after that it was goodbye <laughs> you know I got the role and I made sure I never got sick <laughs> <laughs> because the next understudy might yes, be waiting exactly. in the wings <laughs> I mean it, it was an extraordinary shift of life for you um, from having grown up in very humble circumstances mm -hmm. um, watched your mom go to work as a domestic worker struggling and often I'd, and yourself following yes. In her footsteps mm -hmm. to suddenly be part of an international touring production, traveling the world, yes. must have been. Uh, you must have felt like you'd you'd stood into somebody else's life. Yeah, it was. I mean, from the very first production that I did, Umabata, when I went overseas mm. uh, to London, uh, I was still working as a domestic uh, worker then because I went there and then came back to to my work as a, as a domestic. But it, it, it was it was weird because when we went to London and and as, as staying in a hotel and a white woman coming to clean up for us and I, I thought it was very strange because mm -hmm. no 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 in South Africa <laughs> white this. women don't do this job it's our job <laughs> <laughs> and and then uh, after Umabata uh, it was Ipindombi and, and, and the will just 
you know, led me to different places. Yeah. Uh, one of the chapters I really enjoyed reading was how, how that production took you to West Africa for the first time. And you're, you're experiencing Nigeria mm-hmm. and uh, a, a country where black people could aspire to anything. Exactly. Uh, mm. from, from the lens of a South African. Just share with us a little bit about what you experienced on that trip. Well, number one, we took a chartered flight from Rome which was Nigerian Airways. Um, um, the pilot was black. Air hostesses were, were black. Everyone was black, you know, you know in, in, the, in the flight. <laughs> and, and here we were, you know, we're coming from South African Airways where everything was white from air hostesses to, to the pilots. And our director, who, 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 was, who was white, she, she actually thought the flight would, wouldn't make it to Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> She hadn't seen black people flying anything or or, or working, you know, as as mm. as waitresses in in, yeah, in, yeah. in the in the uh, in the aeroplane, and when we got there, we were take, we, you know, we were stars. You know, for the first time, we felt like we were stars, yeah. and we were chauffeured in limousines. And you know, Nigerians can play very big. You know, we were chauffeured into limousines. We were taken to a five-star hotel, which was the first for us. Because in yeah. South Africa, we didn't have any. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. We we're not allowed to those five-star hotels, yeah. and life suddenly just changed for us and 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 meeting with those black people who were so proud of being themselves being proud uh, uh, of being um uh, uh, black people and for us it, it it gave us a different light like oh so you can be black and be you know <laughs> yeah. and be like this and be and and be a proud person uh, it changed. It, it really changed us mm. in a different way. That trip also brought a really seminal moment in your life because it brought a very special friendship into your life. You discover that Miriam Makeba is staying at the same yes. hotel that you're in. Uh, mm. And uh, tell us, I mean, you, you literally went, please tell us what room she's in. We've got to go knock on the door and say hello. Uh, <laughs> what was that first meeting like? <laughs> um, uh, we were staying at the hotel called, uh, oh, uh, what was it? Oh, um, mm, Palace something. Mm. And it was on our f- first week, and then we were told, uh, Miriam, do you know who is here? Because everyone at the hotel knew that we were South Africans. Yeah. And they knew Miriam Makeba is a South African. A- at the reception, they said, do, do you know who has just checked in here? And we said, who? We had no idea. I said, Miriam Makeba. What? <laughs> Uh, she is in room. I don't know why they told us the room. I, you, you know, she's in room 505. We just went there to her room with our bags and everything like that. And we knocked at her door. And she saw, she knew, she already knew that we were staying at the hotel. Mm. And she saw, she started crying. And, and she was like, oh, she was touching us. And, oh, my God. Oh, you're smelling of home. You're smelling of home. And later I would ask her, why did you say we're smelling of home? Were well, we smelling coal <laughs> <laughs> from coal stoves? Mm. Mm. <laughs> but it was amazing. And that started a very great relationship uh, with her because later on, I tried, I, I, me took to New York, took me to New York, yeah. and and then when I decided to stay, and and Miriam came over there to to work, and we began we we, we began a very long relationship, yeah, and, until she passed away. So let's fast forward to the days in New York, and that very difficult decision for you to stay. The, the, the production had gone there with an intent to run for a year. Yes. it was shut down within weeks because of the protests outside the theatre. Unfortunately, yeah. it was 1976, and and the pro- protest had, was had, uh, had just started in in South Africa, mm-hmm. and Ipindom had had travelled. And we had been on West End uh, with no problem, and then when we were in New York on Broadway, it was just at the wrong time. Mm. You know, the whole world was focusing on South Africa, seeing South Africa burning Soweto, and 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 the children running uh, uh, running Dang. out of South Africa, yeah. and at the same time when we were there, uh, uh, young kids like Tietsi uh, Mashinini were were arriving in New York, being interviewed, and here we were dancing and singing with the uh, Ipintombi show, and they said, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want this show. We want a show that's going to tell us exactly what's what's going on in yeah. South Africa. And we say, oh, 
but this show has been running for years. We can't suddenly just, you know, change the yeah, show right, yeah. to, to talk about South African politics and uh, and all that. So, and from the first day the show was picketed, um, even our friends, uh, South African friends, they, they would come and visit us and say, later we'll be picketing outside. Mm, they wouldn't come and watch it. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they didn't come and watch it. Mm. Uh, sadly, the show had to be closed down. It did, though, create the window for you to, to stay in New York. Yes, yes, we decided like eight eight or nine of us although one of them decided to leave later we decided no we're going to stay i mean who wants to leave new york now we just arrived mm-hmm. you know so uh, we we decided okay we're going to create something for ourselves and 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 stay on yeah. and and then things were just happening uh, we, uh, and then i met huma segela started working with him and uh, yeah so the career trajectory took off. Um, Sundiwe, if I can bring you back in here, reading that section of the book, I was acutely aware that you too had a long stretch away from home working for the UN. Mm. Was it was it emotional for you to engage with Tembi's stories of that period in her life and the longing for home and the missing your daughter who was back at home mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, you never lost your sense of, of longing for home? Did, mm. did you feel that quite acutely writing that section? Y- yes, and, and a lot more. You know, when I eventually do my book three Hmm. about the story of my life, this is going to feature. Because uh, listening to her, writing with her, I, 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 uh, I grew. I grew. A lot of attitude changed for me. And uh, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed. And to see the, the sameness of our lives and the huge difference and the emotional distance. If you ask me even when I retired, if I could ever feel a kinship, a friendship with someone like, the answer would have been a definite no. Hmm. And look at us today. I am heartened to realize that my negative perception of people in showbiz (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> is shared by even her family. I'm not alone. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, for me, it's an affirmation of something I now embrace, that to change, to see differently, doesn't shrink you. It grows you. I have grown. That's an incredibly powerful statement. I yeah. have grown. To watch Tembi and to get to know her as such a family-oriented person was, huh? <laughs> For Eye me. opening to say the least. Very, yeah, yeah, very. The book is also an affirmation of the importance of relationships and personal relationships and how the small act of kindness or of bravery of a single oh. person can change a life's trajectory mm-hmm. entirely. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm not going to give too many of those stories away. I want our listeners to read the book for themselves, but you will understand what I mean by saying there are many points along your road, Tembi, where mm-hmm. somebody else reaching out a hand to ho- help or somebody else saying, You've got to take this opportunity, no matter what the, the sacrifice, is a life changer. And mm. agency on her part. Yeah. Because other people can say, this is right, but you still have to do the, 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 mm. the, the work. The work and you know, she, yeah. she rose to the occasion. There were people, even family, who were saying, no, no. But once her mind was made up, she took opportunities when they were presented to and ran with them whether those were on stage, on television, Mm -hmm. on the big screen, Mm -hmm. and in the decision to come back home. Now, I have to wrap for time purposes, but I can't not mention that earlier this year you received the Living Legends Award from the National Black Theatre Festival in the USA. After all the time you'd spent there, the work you'd done there, the relationships you'd built there, that must have been an incredibly proud moment for you. It was, it was. uh, When I I got that email in in January, early early January, uh, uh, I couldn't believe it. Uh, They said, we want to honour you. Uh, we have seen your work and we still want to see more of your work. And uh, and I went there and I was honoured with all these other great actors that I had never even thought that you know I, I, I could meet. And I was mm. there sh- sharing the table with them, sharing stories. It, it was wonderful. Well, congratulations Thank on you. that uh, that incredible award and on the body of work. Uh, I mean, from television to film to stage and more and more stage. I get the sense that theatre is still, it's still your my first, first love, love, isn't it? it yeah, is, it and is. behind the microphone, I should mention as well. <laughs> Uh, the book is called Theatre Road, By My a Story. By publisher. And uh, yes, thank you.
thank you. I was about to get to that. <laughs> now, the publisher is Caravan Press, and uh, who are doing amazing work bringing beautiful stories like this to light. And I do want to mention that there is a book launch tonight at the Book Lounge in Rilland mm-hmm. Street. So I've only had 15 minutes. If you'd like an hour or more to get to grips with this and hear more of the story, please get yourself to the Book Lounge tonight. 5.30 for 6 p.m. is when the event is happening. And get yourself to a bookstore and buy a copy of Theatre Road, My Story as Told to Sindewe Magone. It is the life story of Tembi and Charlie Jones. I have no doubt that there has to be a sequel because I can see that there are more chapters much, still much to more. be written. Much, but thank much you both more. so much for being with us thank today. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very much.